tonight on DC News Now at 9. Every dog has his day. It wasn't the dark, it's gonna come to the light. History made inside a New York City courtroom. Former President Donald Trump found guilty in his hush money trial. He's now the first U.S. president to be criminally convicted. Tonight, we look at what's next for the former president. Can he go to jail? And how could this verdict impact the presidential election? Plus, stop loss, beware. Also ahead tonight, a new program to get repeat traffic offenders off DC streets. I trust DPW that they've booted those cars, but it's not, um, it's a good first step. Could your car be booted next? Hi, good evening everyone. Dragging some dry days across the DMV weekend forecast. It's coming up. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. The real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. Maintaining his innocence until the end, former President Donald Trump speaking outside the courtroom just moments after he was found guilty on all 34 counts in his hush money trial. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight for DC News Now at 9 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. Certainly a historic day for the United States. You're taking a live look outside that Manhattan courthouse where the jury reached a verdict after deliberating for nine and a half hours. Trump was facing charges on 34 counts of falsifying business records, all connected to hush money payments to buy Stormy Daniels' silence during the final weeks of the 2016 presidential race. Trump denied any wrongdoing throughout the case, but the jury disagreed, finding him guilty on every single count. Trump is now the first U.S. president to be convicted of a crime. D.C. News Now's Tosin Fekile joining us here in studio tonight. And Tosin, the president does remain a free man tonight. He does for now. He is at Trump Towers. Sentencing still a while away. Twelve New Yorkers heard testimony from 22 witnesses, which included former and current employees of former President Donald Trump. The jury had to be unanimous in its decision before reaching a verdict that unprecedented vet verdict Trump found guilty. This was a rigged decision right from day one with a conflicted judge who should have never been allowed to try this case, never. And we will fight for our Constitution. This is long from over. On this day, May 30th, 2024, Donald Trump became the first former president to be convicted of felony crimes. The 12 everyday jurors vowed to make a decision based on the evidence and the law and the evidence and the law alone. Their deliberations led them to a unanimous conclusion beyond a reasonable doubt. Prosecutors accused Trump of taking part in an illegal conspiracy to undermine the integrity of the 2016 presidential election and an unlawful plan to suppress negative information, which included concealing hush money payments to an adult film star. Americans immediately reacting to the stunning verdict. Yes! Justice has been prevailed. Yay, go. Lock him up, as he likes to say. President Trump did nothing wrong. A sentiment the former president shares stressing the trial wasn't fair. We didn't do a thing wrong. I'm a very innocent man, and it's okay. I'm fighting for our country. Officials say the jury reviewed call logs, text messages, heard recordings, saw checks and invoices. I did my job. We did our job. Um, many voices out there. Um, the only voice that matters is the voice of the jury, and the jury has spoken. Now the big question. Former President Trump, can he still run for president? Yes, under the Constitution. Uh, the Constitution does not prohibit someone who has been convicted of a major crime or even is in prison from running for president. The charges the former president faces carry jail time, something a judge will have to decide. It doesn't look like he would be inclined to be sentenced to jail. That is, the judge would probably give a pass on that. But uh, about a third of the analysts that I know think he will spend some jail time. They differ about how much. And that jail time he's talking about, some analysts think Donald Trump might face have to do with those approximately 10 offenses against the gag order. And they say that may come into play. That's a big may. And that could tip the play when it comes to jail time. Trump's legal team is expected to appeal this decision. Sentencing is scheduled for July 11th. Chris. All right, Tosin Fekile in studio. Thanks, Tosin. The Biden campaign, meanwhile, weighing in as well. Statement came down tonight that reads in part, 
Donald Trump has always mistakenly believed he would never face consequences for breaking the law for his own personal gain. But today's verdict does not change the fact that the American people face a simple reality. There is still only one way to keep Donald Trump out of the Oval Office at the ballot box. Our team coverage continues now with Marielle Carbone. She is joining us live outside Lafayette Park, right in front of the White House, where Donald Trump, of course, resided for four years. And Marielle, you've been getting the pulse of voters there. Uh, yeah, Chris, I have, and really it's been a mixed response. For some people, this verdict is exactly what they expected. Others say it's still a bit of a surprise. Now, regardless, they acknowledge just how monumental of a moment this is in American history. It is one of those moments that will probably stick with me. For D.C. Uh, resident oh, Lev Boonin, uh, finding out the verdict in the hush money trial of former President Donald Trump is a moment he won't forget. My in-laws called, let's say, hey, turn on the news, turn on the news, turn on the news. And we were filling with the remote and guilty, guilty, guilty. It's a shared experience for many as people tuned in in real time to see history unfold. Trump, the first sitting or former president found guilty of a crime. One of our roommates sent us a message about about the trial and the verdict, like, oh my gosh, guys, like, Trump is guilty. Isami Khan and Murna Kulkarni are from California and interning in D.C. Um, I definitely think it was really significant, and it's a big deal that something like this is happening. They don't believe the verdict will have a huge impact on the November election. I feel like the people who have established the, themselves as his supporters, a lot of times the things that he might end up doing, they don't really affect the way they perceive him. But Khan says it could have a broader impact. I think the difference is going to be, like, the outside, like, how how other countries view us, like the fact that someone who's arrested can still run for president. Every dog has his day. What's in the dark is going to come to the light. Kiana Monroe, who's in D.C. from West Palm Beach, has been following the case. Listen to the radio talk shows. She believes the trial has been eye-opening. As for what's next. Regardless of how we feel or our own opinions about who's running, mm -hmm. we still should get out and vote. And Chris, not everyone is so thrilled with the trial or the verdict. One man I spoke to tells me that uh, no one cares about these charges and that this is only turning the American public's attention away from more important issues that they should be focused on. Reporting live from Lafayette Square tonight, I'm Arielle Carbone, DC News Now. All right, Marielle, thanks. We'll have continuing coverage on Trump's verdict coming up at 930. But when we're not on air, you can always find the latest over on DCNewsNow.com. All right, let's get a first check on the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. Not a bad evening out there. And Janessa, the next few days uh, look absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, we deserve this across the DMV with all the rain and severe storms we've been dealing with. Finally, things are starting to clear out. It's a beautiful night across all of the region. Uh, done with the rain. And th here's kind of that closer radar look of the suburbs of D.C. I mean, we're nice and dry from Jefferson, wherever you go in Prince George's uh, County. Uh, really high pressure is to our west and it's starting to settle in. There's one issue with all the clearing starting to unfold. You have frost alerts that are now in place across West Virginia and one of our counties, Grant County, where overnight lows are back into the upper 30s and so that's quite chilly. They're asking for all vegetation. If you have plants outside, it's time to bring them inside for tonight night along with tomorrow because we're expecting some uh, freeze concerns and frost as you're waking up temps as well across Prince George's County Montgomery into the upper 60s right now but as the clearing continues to unfold for tonight uh, things will get uh, quite cool along with this wind flow now coming out of the north and west you do have gusts 15 to 20 miles per hour the farther west that you go here in the metro area tonight as the kiddos are headed to the bus stop tomorrow morning you have the lower 50s upper 40s in some isolated locations. Uh, but Chris, I mean, this one is going to be a phenomenal looking Friday with mostly sunny skies. Let's talk more about it coming up. All right, Janessa, thanks. Well, breaking news now at 9 in Leesburg, Virginia, where we've learned multiple people have been shot. DC News Now's Max Marcilla joining us live on scene with the latest tonight. Max, obviously a big police presence out there right now. Chris, there is. There's a big police presence. We don't have that many details. The biggest thing that we do know is that Leesburg police tell us they have not yet made an arrest. So if you know anything, they are asking you to call them with a tip or with any information. Chris, you mentioned that police telling us multiple people have been shot. Right now, we don't know how many people. We also don't know their age. 
their condition right now. All we know is that multiple people were shot and they were brought to the hospital. Right now, you mentioned there's a lot of police here as they continue to investigate and try to figure out what happened and make an arrest in this case. Elsewhere in this apartment complex, there are plenty of people standing outside watching police talking to each other, also trying to figure out what happened. Not a lot of answers right now, but again, we know multiple people have been shot. Just to paint a picture of where we are, we're very close to downtown Leesburg. This is an apartment complex off Edward Ferry Road north northeast. It's about a quarter mile away from the Leesburg police headquarters, so it was a very quick and short trip for police. As you can see behind me, there are many of them. They continue to investigate, and we will bring you the news as we get it from police. Reporting live in Leesburg, Max Marcilla, DC News Now. All right, here now a look at a vigil being held tonight. It's happening now in honor of the men who were shot and killed at a park in Silver Spring on Sunday. People gathered at a building on Maple and Sherman Avenues at Tacoma Park to remember DeAndre Wint. He, along with Quincy Johnson, were found shot at no local park. The two 20-year-olds both died at that park. DeAndre was a laid-back, chill young man who just won a win. Sorry he had to be this way. So... Right now we're all grieving and be able to try to cope with what's going on, but at the end of the day, our little brother is gone, so we're just trying to do our best to cope and grieve with it. Well, Montgomery County police say they are still looking for anyone involved. And tonight, an emotional conclusion to a month-long nightmare for one Virginia man and his family. Tyler Wenrich, who was arrested in Turks and Caicos, returned back home on a flight earlier tonight. Now, this week, a judge sentenced Wenrich to pay a fine for having ammunition instead of prison time. Our sister station was there as he touched down in Richmond tonight. He said he is more than ready to put the tedious nightmare behind him and turn his attention to his wife and 18 month old son. After worrying, he may not be able to hug them again for years. While well, aiming to keep DC streets safe, the Department of Public Works cracking down on drivers with thousands of dollars in unpaid tickets. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg live in Northwest where this pilot program is ongoing right now. And Daniel, hundreds of tickets, they've been towed and booted just in the last couple months. Yeah, Chris, DPW focusing their effort here in Ward 1. Since April 1st, there have been 69 vehicles towed and another a 777 booted. They're focusing here on some of these side streets as well as the main roads looking for the most egregious cases of people not paying their tickets. The DC Department of Public Works says its new pilot program targeting drivers with thousands in unpaid fines has been successful. I'm like for DPW doing everything possible to crack down on cars traveling at excessive speeds or running red lights. I'm also for MPD and forcing the law. Since April, 69 vehicles have been towed with more than $600,000 in unpaid tickets and separately DPW has booted 777 vehicles representing almost $1.6 million in unpaid fines. Some of them are on the main arterials in Ward 1 and some are parked in uh, residential areas. So we're all over. Johnny Gaither is the DPW parking enforcement administrator who says they're not targeting anyone in particular. If you have tickets that are owed, whether you're from Maryland or Virginia, if our license plate readers catch you, uh, then you will be booted and or towed. It seems like it's a good approach to reduce this, these crackdowns on all these offenders and reduce the, uh, the amount of damage they do. Gaither says it's part of the district's Vision Zero strategy, and as they identify more areas with scofflaw vehicles, they'll expand the pilot. We're looking uh, to uh, improve the safety of our streets, and that's why we're uh, working in this, well, that's why we have this program, and that's why we have booters uh, out on our streets every day. Now, DPW is also on track to procure another impound lot, making three impound lots by the end of the summer, by midsummer rather, uh, to hold about 300 vehicles. They say if your vehicle is not paid off within 28 days, it will be sold at auction or scrapped. We're live in Northwest. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now.